Attorney General to announce the findings of two investigations conducted by our office, both of which have garnered significant media attention, Unlock Michigan and Make Your Date program. Uh, and I'd like to acknowledge uh, some of the members of my staff who are here with me today uh, and will join me later to answer questions um, uh, from my criminal division, our acting chief, Daniel Hackman clark um, Mike Frezza, Rick Cunningham, uh, our special agent, uh, Pete Ackerley, and not here with us today, but who I'd like to acknowledge, um, Solicitor General Fadwa Hamoud. So the first investigation concerns the practices of paid petition circulators associated with the ballot initiative commonly referred to as Unlock Michigan. A well-informed public is essential to the health of our democracy, and as such, I hope the review of the circumstances in this case serves as a reminder to residents to be aware of the questionable practices utilized by those presenting themselves as agents of the democratic process. It's clear from this investigation that some paid circulators may resort to unethical practices in order to fulfill the demands of their clients. The investigation was formally opened in September of 2020 after my office received a request from attorney John Pirich who noted in his letter that recent media reporting suggested there was evidence of irregularities in the way that petition circulators were obtaining the signatures of citizens in support of the Unlock Michigan petitions. The media reporting uh, reported including a video that purported to show Eric Tissinger, an employee paid to train circulators how to do, quote, illegal things. A second media article related to Mark Jacoby, owner of Let the Voters Decide, who had also been hired by Unlock Michigan to train petition circulators, had a criminal record for falsifying his voter res uh, registration and a history of using bait and switch tactics in other petition drives around the country. Now this graphic helps explain the relationship <clears throat> between those who had been accused of criminal wrongdoing and Unlock Michigan. Unlock Michigan hired national petition management to spearhead the petition gathering process. They in turn hired two companies, one for each side of the state. In the field was to collect signatures on the west side of Michigan, let the voters decide on the east side of Michigan. In the field hired Eric Tissinger to train circulators. Let the voters decide hired VAR, VAR group to train circulators. Our, investigator, our investigation found that a video of a training conducted by Eric Tissinger was recorded by Richard Williamson. Williamson was hired by Farrow and Associates to act as a tracker during the training provided by Tissinger. Farrow and Associates was hired by Keep Michigan Safe, a group that opposed the efforts of Unlock Michigan. Williamson used a video recorder disguised as a pen to record parts of the training. Examples of the things Tissinger said during the training included, signing the petition will only have the effect of putting the repeal of the emergency law on the ballot so that all voters can decide its fate. When asked, don't you think everyone should have a chance to vote on this? Tissinger does not tell the trainees that the plan is to bypass voters by having the legislature approve the initiative and thereby repeal the law, a method that excludes the option for veto by Governor Whitmer under Michigan law. He says that circulators can leave copies of their petitions with store clerks to collect signatures from customers. And although it is illegal to collect signatures on private property, such as 
store parking lots without permission. Tissinger advises that circulators should avoid store managers and, quote, act stupid if approached by police about trespassing. Quote, act like you don't know anything, Tissinger said. Also, he suggests circulators say, quote, I had no idea. I couldn't do that here, man. Tissinger was interviewed as part of our investigation, and he denied ever encouraging anyone to violate the laws controlling the circulation of petitions, and this is corroborated by video evidence. Our investigation established that he is fully aware of the requirements of the law, and yet seems to relish finding ways to skirt the rules as demonstrated by how he instructed circulators in nefarious ways. Now, while the comments made by Tissinger during the training session are unethical, possibly even immoral, they do not rise to a level that would support criminal charges. They are simply not sufficient to establish that he had the necessary intent to encourage or solicit criminal activity by those who circulated petitions in support of Unlock Michigan. Our investigation found clear evidence of misrepresentation by petition circulators and questionable training by persons who recruited and were supposed to supervise paid circulators. However, those incidents were not in violation of any criminal statute. And while our investigation did find evidence of unsavory practices and sleazy tactics by petition circulators, the similarly unethical conduct of the witnesses to such activity makes prosecution of the circulators untenable. The applicable statutes are clear on their face that certain types of conduct are illegal and are subject to criminal sanctions. There were three additional videos that were investigated by this office. The videos were presumably recorded by licensed attorney Gretchen Hertz, another employee of Faro and Associates. They were recorded at the Brighton Farmer's Market, the Falcon's Nest Restaurant, and the Howell Western Wear Store. Now, in a video shot at the Brighton's Farmer Market, Hertz asked the petition circulator if she can sign for her husband who is not present in the market. Eva Reyes, the circulator, tells her that it's okay. Hertz then writes something on a petition. Reyes was interviewed and advised that she was told by Ryan Mazurkowitz that she could lie to voters. Mazurkowitz denies this. At the Falcon's Nest restaurant, Hertz asks the restaurant employee if she can sign for her husband. She is told that it's okay, and Hertz signs the name Michael Hertz. She does not cross the name out. Finally, in video footage from the Western Wear store, Hertz asks the clerk whether she can sign her husband's name. She is again told that it's okay. The video does not show if Hertz signed anything. At the bottom of the petition is the signature of David Scott signed while signatures were still being gathered. Now the law is clear <clears throat> that a voter cannot sign someone else's name to a ballot question petition. That a person cannot make a false certification on such a petition and that a circulator cannot sign his or her name to the ballot question petition until after the last voter signs the petition. It is likewise clear that a person cannot make, file, or otherwise publish any document required by the election law that contains false signatures with the intent to defraud. However, there is no law that expressly prohibits a circulator from making false statements about the purpose of the petition to a voter in an attempt to obtain the voter's signature. Furthermore, there's no provision in law that imposes a criminal sanction for making misrepresentations 
or even outright, outright lies to a voter in order to induce him or her to sign a ballot question petition. There is also no law that directly prohibits a circulator from simply advising a voter that he or she may sign their spouse's name or the name of any other person on a petition. It is clearly not permissible for a voter to sign someone else's name. However, the circulator would not directly commit a crime unless and until he or she actually sign the certification of circulator on the petition, attesting to the fact that the voter's signature is believed to be a genuine signature of the voter. Now, one of the significant hurdles to pursuing criminal charges in this case was the fact that the individual who recorded instances of potentially criminal behavior crossed the line between simply witnessing and recording events and inducing criminal conduct. Ms. Hertz went from simply recording illegal conduct to engaging in criminal conduct herself. Attempts to interview her were unsuccessful. Every person has the right to assert their Fifth Amendment protections, and in this instance, Ms. Hertz would not agree to an interview without assurances that her words would not be used against her in a court of law. There are times when investigators and prosecutors will agree to these types of arrangements in an effort to find out what happened. In this case, our investigators had the video evidence. In addition, the crime being investigated had a substantially similar penalty to the crime that Ms. Hertz seemed to have committed. This negated the idea of giving the, the little fish, Ms. Hertz, a pass in order to catch the bigger fish. And without someone laying the legal foundation for admitting the videos at trial, we would not be able to use them in any proceeding. Specifically, those basic foundational requirements include, one, when was the video taken? And two, does the video accurately reflect the conversation? Now, there can be no doubt that many of the statutes imposing criminal sanctions were violated during the circulation of the Unlock Michigan petitions. However, for a variety of reasons, criminal prosecution is simply not feasible here. In total, my office examined evidence and considered charges against nine individuals, including Eric Tissinger for his conduct witnessed on the video, and Gretchen Hertz for her conduct on the videos, as well as those that she interacted with. But there simply is a lack of sufficient admissible evidence to bring criminal charges against anyone involved. Now, moving on to the Make Your Date investigation. Um, so the second investigation we're going to review involves the City of Detroit and the Make Your Date program. This investigation was initiated in July of 2019 following the receipt of letters by our department from two City of Detroit employees. Our team examined evidence to determine whether there was criminal conduct associated with the mayor of Detroit specifying make your date as a mayoral priority and providing it with taxpayer funds. Allegations included the misappropriation of public funds and the unlawful destruction of emails within the city of Detroit. Make Your Date is a maternal health program designed to prevent preterm births for at-risk mothers in Detroit. It was alleged that the deletion of emails by city employees was to hide a personal relationship between the mayor of Detroit and the director of the Make Your Date program. My office conducted a comprehensive review, including interviews, and re-interviews of 21 witnesses, the execution and review of four search warrants, 
review of over 1,500 pages of financial documents from the Detroit Health Department, Southeast Michigan Health Association, and Wayne State University, and the review of over one million documents seized with the assistance of Michigan State Police from the City of Detroit's IT department. Now, in addition, our team reviewed documents from the Charitable Trust section, the Office of Inspector General report, and various additional documents from the City of Detroit, including the City's procurement ordinances and policies, email use policy, retention, uh, records retention policies, Detroit City Charter, all FOIA requests from November the 13th, 2018 to June 15th, 2019, related to Make Your Date, the City of Detroit Health Department grant and plan submissions, as well as the known civil lawsuits against the City of Detroit related to FOIA litigation. The duty of our department in this investigation was to determine whether there was intent, beyond a reasonable doubt, to engage in any criminal act. After a lengthy and thorough investigation, my department has determined that no criminal charges will be filed in this matter. Now I'd like to note that the absence of adequate evidence to charge individuals with crimes does not absolve the parties of their ethical obligations to meet expectations of public trust inherent to their roles as employees and officials as the, of the city of Detroit. And I believe there is ample opportunity to improve upon the operations of city government, especially with regard to transparency and accountability to the residents of Detroit. Allegations regarding the unlawful destruction of communications within the city of Detroit include reports that staff were directed to delete correspondence to protect the mayor following a public display of video footage by Robert Carmack, an individual with a known adversarial history towards Mayor Duggan who used the video footage to imply an inappropriate relationship existed between the mayor and the director of Make Your Date. Multiple media outlets and other organizations made requests to the City of Detroit under FOIA, the Freedom of Information Act, from November of 2018 through June of 2019 for various forms of correspondence from City of Detroit personnel regarding the Make Your Date program. It was reported that Alexis Wiley, Chief of Staff to the Mayor, ordered the destruction of emails by employees regarding their communication related to fundraising activities on behalf of the Make Your Date initiative. Our investigation sought to determine if any such order had been given. During the course of the investigation, it was determined that there was a conversation between Wiley and the Office of Development and Grants Director Ryan Fredericks, which occurred in December of 2018. The investigation ultimately came down to this first conversation, as well as a second conversation between two individuals in February 2019, both regarding deletion of emails by junior staffers. My team reviewed the evidence for consideration for a FOIA violation. A violation of the FOIA Act is a civil offense and contains no criminal penalty. Bribery of a public official and embezzlement by public officials charges were also reviewed with no evidence to support either charge. Finally, the team reviewed the facts closely for destruction of public records and destruction of evidence in a future proceeding. Destruction of evidence in a future proceeding, this would include a FOIA lawsuit if the emails were deleted, were responsive to a FOIA request. Now, when emails are deleted, or when they were deleted in December of 2018 and February 2019, 
There was no FOIA request concerning the emails of either junior staffer. Therefore, this charge was not sustainable because no FOIA existed, so there could be no destruction of that evidence. Finally, my team considered the charge of destruction of public records, the elements of which are that, that the defendant willfully carried away, mutilated, or destroyed public records. Willfully is defined as implying a purposeful design to do a thing with evil or illegal design, or it must be shown that the defendant failed to do what he was obligated to do. Now this element goes to the state of mind of Wiley and Fredericks and why the emails would have been deleted. Um, the reason they gave for this was to protect junior staffers. Now the definition of destroyed is not met as nearly all the emails were recovered and nearly all of them were actually posted publicly. So finally, the documents must also be public records. Now, the law defines public records as including official books, papers, or records. These emails were the work of junior staffers related to Make Your Date and attempts to raise funds for the mayoral priority. Emails of the management team Grants awarded and other official papers reflecting the work City of Detroit staffers did on behalf of Make Your Date program were retained. And after a careful review of the evidence and the law that applies to this case, no criminal charge could be sustained against any City of Detroit employee. Now, as I've said, I believe this case highlights the great importance of improving education and training regarding policies and procedures for the City of Detroit staff. On September 2nd, 2015, Mayor Duggan issued Executive Order 2015-4 regarding FOIA and records retention. The executive order was titled City of Detroit Records Management Policy and specified the retention and disposal schedules for public records and mandated adherence to the records management policy and establish protocols for responding to third party records requests, including those made pursuant to the Michigan Freedom of Information Act. The existence of the executive order, or of any policy for that matter, is in and of itself not enough to ensure awareness and accountability on the part of personnel. And in this case, the City of Detroit's employees. Regular training is recommended to ensure personnel is aware of their obligations and responsibilities under the policy, which in turn is necessary to ensure transparency and accountability to those served by city government. I'd also encourage the City of Detroit to evaluate its training protocols going forward to improve understanding and compliance on the part of the staff. The facts and evidence in this case simply did not substantiate criminal activity and therefore we cannot pursue charges against any individuals. The Michigan State Police and their digital evidence team assisted our department in this investigation and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the Michigan State Police for their hard work and assistance during the course of this investigation. As I mentioned at the beginning, a second allegation brought forth by a former City of Detroit employee was that the City of Detroit misappropriated funds regarding a federally funded program known as Motor City Match. That portion of the complaint was investigated by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, the Office of Inspector General, for which charges were not initiated by the U.S. Attorney's Office. So I'd like to thank you now for, for listening, but I'd also like to turn this over to Courtney from my comm staff for questions from the media, and we look forward to taking your questions on both of these matters. Thank you, Attorney General. We're just getting our mic. We're good? Okay. 
So first up for Q&A, we 